Let's look at a bunch of equations that have either no solution or all real numbers, infinitely many solutions. With this first one, the very first thing that we want to do is to simplify. So I notice that I've got that 3 and the parentheses. So let's go ahead and move that 3 into the parentheses. I'm not going to make any changes to the left-hand side. So 6x minus 1 is equal to 3 times 4 plus 3 times 2x. Let's go ahead and do the math on that right-hand side. So 6x minus 1 is equal to 12 plus 6x. So do you see what's going to happen? I've got a 6x on both sides. So as I attempt to get my variables on one side and my numbers on the other, Here's what happens. Let's move this 6x from the right to the left. I'm going to subtract that 6x minus 6x minus 6x. And I end up with those 6x's canceling on both sides. And I get negative 1 is equal to 12. Well, negative 1 is actually not equal to 12. It's actually not ever equal to 12. So as I'm looking at my solutions here, it means I've got no variables and either a true equation, I've got no variables and negative 1 equals 12. That's false or a false equation. Because we have a false equation, that means that our answer is no solution. So we can either write out no solution, or we can write that answer out as a circle with a line through it, which means the empty set. Okay, here's our next one. Now you know that the variables are gonna drop out, right? So the question really is, are we gonna get a true equation or a false equation? I need to start by distributing that negative sign. So I get three and then distributing the negative, negative times two, and then negative times negative y, that's gonna be plus y, is equal to nothing to simplify on that right-hand side. Three minus two is one plus y is equal to y plus one. Now you could stop right here because no matter what number you put in for y, whether it's like five or 823.2, that number plus one is always going to equal itself, right? So I've got this true equation no matter what. Now you could take that one last step and try and combine your y terms, subtract a y, but once I do that, I end up with, 1 equals 1. So in this one, do we have a true equation? Yeah, we totally have a true equation. So our solution is all real numbers. I can write that solution in a couple of ways. I can say all real numbers, and I'm just going to abbreviate with the number symbol, all real numbers. I can give the set symbol for all real numbers, which is this R with a double bar and then the R. If you're asked about the number of solutions you have, you can say that you have infinitely many solutions, infinitely many. So you can say that there are infinitely many. This next one is for you. I want you to do all of the things and then come up with a solution. Go ahead and pause and then come back and catch up with me. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to add the 2a and the a on the left hand side, combining those like terms. So there are 3a's plus 1 equals 3a minus 4. Now I'm going to attempt to get my a's together, but if you take a look at this, 3a plus 1 3a minus 4, you're never going to get the same answer. But let's go ahead and try anyway. I'm going to subtract that 3a from both sides. As I do the math there, I end up with just a 1 on the left and a negative 4 on the right. This is a false equation, so your answer would be no solution. Or you could express no solution as the empty set symbol. You're doing great. I've got another video for you here on solving formulas. Thanks for watching.